as we've you know gone over the last couple of months and where we're going and had some great meetings out in LA and, and certainly it was easy to see leaving those meetings his leadership um, and how strong he's been and, and where we're heading with all the, the changes that are going on across college football and, and so I had great conversations with him and very excited about our leadership in the Big Ten as we move forward. Uh, it's an exciting time right now to be at Ohio State and, and uh, as we transition from from Gene to, to Ross uh, as our athletic director, it's um, you know it's been great to spend time with Ross and certainly want to you know welcome him into the family again and and you know really know that uh, he's got a great group behind him and, and we're very very excited that he's going to be our leader in the athletic department as we move forward and 36 sports and as we head into the fall. But uh, it's been great spending time with him in this transition and, and as he takes over for Gene, but. Uh, he's got great experience. Uh, he's already connected well with a lot of our players and a lot of the staff that's there. And uh, I think he's got a really bright future at Ohio State. I just want to quickly mention, you know, as you head into the preseason this time of year, it's, it's a funky time because, you, you know, you go from spending a little bit of time with your family uh, to now going into the preseason. And, and you know, my family uh, means so much to me as we head into the season. I just want to quickly mention um, you know, my, my family, certainly my wife, Nina, and, and what she's done for me. And, um, you know, this going into our sixth year as a head coach at Ohio State, as we head into the season, she's been an unbelievable rock and been unbelievably supportive along the way. And, um, you know, my three children, you know, RJ heads into his sophomore year. Um, he'll be playing quarterback at DeSales High School and um, excited to see what that brings for him. Um, my wife Nina will, um, you know, be the most stressed out person in Columbus as it starts at about noon on Friday, goes into Friday night football, and then we have the game on Saturday. So there's a lot that goes with that. And then uh, and my two daughters, Grace and Nia, who, um, you know, working hard at basketball and, and certainly, um, you know, had an opportunity to spend a bunch of time with them, you know, this summer. But as we head into the preseason, it's exciting preseason for us. It's been a great summer. You know, the, the team that that we have right now is working with urgency. They're working with purpose. It started with the guys that decided to come back, and, and, and three of them are here today, but it was very difficult to name three guys to come. I mean, it's virtually impossible to do, and, but we did it. We, we figured, you know, uh, these three guys are a great representation of who we have, but uh, by no means do they stick out more than the other guys. There's 12 guys who decided um, that, you know, they wanted to come back, and. Uh, play this year. They, they wanted to forego their opportunity to go in the NFL and come back and uh, leave something behind at Ohio State. And, you know, since they made that decision through the winter and the spring, now in the summer as we head into preseason camp, you can see it. You can see the look in their eye. It's a special group. And then the pieces that we've added, um, you know, we're very, very excited right now. And it's a fun group to be around every day. Coach Mick's been, been doing a great job and, and, you know, some of the workouts we've had this summer. But now as we head into the preseason camp, it's going to be critically important to build a foundation. Every year, you know, you, you rebuild the team. You don't just, you know, jump back to where you were the year previous. And, you know, we're, we're going to work really hard to have a physical preseason camp and build that foundation as that's going to be what's uh, going to be the difference in the end. So uh, Denzel uh, Burke is, is one of the first guys that are here. Denzel um, has already had a tremendous career at Ohio State and made that decision like one of the other guys. Uh, to come back and, and play his senior year. Um, Denzel has already played a, a high level of football, but he's going to be one of the best corners in America. He's shown great leadership. He's made great strides as a player, but also just in his maturity. You know, we're talking on the, the plane ride over here about how you approach preseason camp a lot different now in his point of his career than he would as a freshman. And he's much more intentional with everything he does. And I think he has a chance to be the best corner in America next season. Ameka Abuka, uh, can't say enough about who Ameka is. Ameka is an old soul. Uh, since he's been here, he's been a warrior. Um, he has his degree. He had to make his decision on whether he wanted to go to the NFL or not. He decided to come back with the degree in hand. And, you know, we didn't get a chance to see the best version of him last year with his ankle injury, but we're seeing it now. And he's always been a leader. He had been a leader since he walked in the building as a freshman, but now he gets an opportunity to do that as a senior. And then last is Jack Sawyer. A lot of people lead different ways. Jack leads by his actions. It started off by being you know, one of the first guys to commit to me in the class uh, as a head coach, uh, but also uh, and then recruiting that class, but also deciding to come back this year. He was one of the first, sat down with he and his dad, Lyle, and said, 
uh, they, they have unfinished business here, and they started to get the guys to come back and, and build that that group together that wanted to come back and leave a, leave a legacy behind. And so, you know, being a Buckeye means a lot to him, being from Ohio, and, you know, he's going to continue to lead. He's playing his best football, did at the end of the season, and will continue to do. Had a great off season. So uh, these three guys are here. They're, they're unbelievable representatives of, representatives of Ohio State and, and proud that they're part of, part of our team. Um, you know, the last thing I'll just say and then I'll open up to questions is just that, you know, our focus is on this preseason. It's the next step. And, you know, sure, a lot of coaches will say it. You, know, you can't really, you know, focus on what happened the year before. You can't get too worried about what's coming down the road. But we all know there's a lot of, you know, noise and a lot of hype around this team. And what we can't do is, you know, let those distractions, you know, grab our focus from what we need to do day in and day out. We know it's going to be a long season. But we got to have a great preseason. We got to have a physical preseason. Uh, we got to lay that foundation for what's going to come as we head throughout the season. Uh, but you know, we're very, very excited about our guys. We have great experience in that uh, locker room and some great talent. But it's going to take more than talent. It's going to take all the no talent issues to get to where we want to be and reach our goals. So I appreciate everybody, and we'll open it up to questions. On your left, Coach. Dave Biddle, 24 7 Sports. Hi, Ryan. Over here. I want to ask you about your offensive line entering camp. How do you feel about your O-line overall entering camp? And then in addition to that, who, who do you expect will be your right guard or who are the guys competing there at right guard? Yeah, as you know, the O-line has been the, the area that we've been really, you know, locked in on. I think that, um, you know, coming out of the summer, their bodies look different. I think, you know, you'll see them next week. You know, we have some of those open camps uh, or days of camp. Uh, they, they look good. Mick's done a great job with them. They've had a good, good summer. But we know how important that is. I mean, you know, this, this team is going to go with, as the offensive line goes. This team is going to go as the defensive line goes. And so uh, we know that how important the offensive line is going to be. So uh, I think that some guys have really stepped up. Josh Fryer, to me, has had an unbelievable uh, summer. Donnie's been uh, much, much a leader. Uh, but when it comes to that right guard position, I think, you know, you're going to see, you know, Carson Hinsman and, and Seth, you know, they're, they're both – uh, can swing between center and guard, but then Tegra Shabola is someone that uh, has had another another guy who stepped up and had a good summer, Luke Montgomery. You know, we feel like we have some decent guys in there that can you know fill that role, but we got to go put it on the field now and see how this training and everything that's happened this summer is going to translate to being on the field. On your right side, Coach. Hey, Ryan. Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Uh, I know you've talked about depth at receiver being a big part of what you need to accomplish in the preseason. I guess, where do you, where do you feel you're at with that depth and behind Emeco? Who's kind of starting to emerge in that four to five member group? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I feel like we, we, we have a good, you know, you know we're, we're kind of top heavy there. And, and then, you know, okay, where is four, five, six, and seven? Um, Brandon Ennis, you feel Brandon Ennis when you're out there. So this is going to be a great opportunity for him to do that. Um, you know, Jaden Ballard is another guy who's been in the program a while. We need him to step up and make an impact. He is a down-the-field threat with great speed. Um, and, again, this is somebody that's been in our program now. And I think that's another part of this team that we have is, you know, two, three, four. You know, these guys have been in the, year, in, the, in the program for a while now. So there's been a lot of built-up, you know, um, springs and summers and practices and development along the way. And, so we need, we need JB to step up, and, and he's been um, charged with that challenge along the way. Bryson Rogers is another guy that, that gives us some uh, playmaking ability in the slot. Um, you know, he's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. Uh, he needs to continue to play that way because he has the ability to run routes and get open against anybody in the country, in my opinion. Um, you know, Kojo Antwi is somebody that has to step up as well. And then we have some, some other young guys in there that, that have an opportunity to do that. So, uh, you know, that, that four, five, six, and seven is going to be critical uh, in, in, you know, solidifying the wide receiver depth. Uh, but that's going to have to happen this preseason. Me? Yeah. Uh, Tim May, Tim May Row on 3com uh, Ryan, I'm just wondering, have you, have you talk, told your team to embrace these expectations uh, for this season? And number two, in, in your mind, how legit are these expectations? Well, I think anytime you're you're at Ohio State, you know we, we know you're going to have expectations, but you know there's always going to be chatter, there's always going to be noise, and, and it's our job to to block all those things out and just focus on what really matters. And, and uh, I think especially this time of year, the easy thing to do is focus on you know the goals, focus on the end of the season, but, but that's really is a waste of time if we don't build the foundation right now. Um, 
Now, our guys, they know what the expectation is. You've heard some of them say, you know, what, what, what their goals are. We're not going to shy away from that. You know, we want to win the rivalry game, be right in this, this stadium right here, win this Big Ten championship, win a national championship. You know, we're, we know that. But at the same time, like, that can't be our focus because that's, that's a distraction from where we are right now. And so um, where this season goes and what this team looks like is going to look a lot different than it did last year. And this is a new journey. We've got to rebuild that to get to where we need to be. And, and that started last last winter, but but the next step is now in preseason. And so, um, you know, we know what the expectation. Is. Every time you know I've you know gone into a season at Ohio State, I guess this is going to be my eighth season now. Um, you know, six is the head coach. You know, you expect to win every game. That's just what it is. And if you don't think that's the case, try losing a game at Ohio State. I mean, you're you're expected to win them all. So that's not new. We embrace it in recruiting, and we want to make sure that those type of people are in our program. Brian, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Watkins, Cleveland.com. In, in delegating play calling duties to Chip, obviously that's going to change your your perspective on the game day, change your responsibilities on game day a little bit. How how might that change the way you manage games on a situational basis? Well, I think this year uh, there is a change with the two minute warning. I think that needs to be something that we take into consideration. Um, you know, just how the games are going to change at the end of the end of the game. But, but other than that, um, I, you know, I feel like you know, I've always had a pretty good handle on that. So going into each game, we'll have a game plan in place. Um, you know, Chip's here for a reason, to run the offense. But I think it's my job as the head coach to look on the horizon and figure out what's coming. And in this conference, you know, have experience of what, what's coming down the road, the games we need to win, how we need to win, also with the type of players that we have. So that, that'll kind of be my input in the offense. Uh, knowing you know what we're doing and, and the great thing for for he and I is you know we see things the same way and we've been in the same offense together uh, in our careers so I think there'll be a lot of that but uh, Chip's one of the best offensive minds in, in you know the history of college football in my opinion and he's a great play caller so you know he, he's got to do that he's just got to go and get a feel for for our guys and let them call it um, but in terms of the management of the game and everything it allow me an opportunity to, to be on both sides of the ball including special teams and have a great feel for that and making those decisions. Hey, Coach. Uh, Mike Regalado, Bruin Report Online. Uh, sticking with Chip, uh, last few years I've been able to see his uh, innovation and his creativity with players. Um, aside from that, uh, how excited are you to see what he can do with this team, and what else does he bring to, uh, to, your, uh, to your program? Well, I think when you, when you look at any offense, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what plays maximize the guys you have in the locker room. Um, you know, Chip has a background of doing things a lot of different ways. I think everyone immediately goes to the spread offense, and you know when he was uh, at Oregon and, and some of the no huddle stuff. But you know he's you know he's at UCLA. You saw him do things with three tight ends in the game. You know before that, you know there was a lot of two back stuff. There's you know there's a lot of different uh, versatility in his background, and so I think the idea is all right. What fits our guys? It starts with the quarterback, and then it goes with the offensive line, the running backs, the receivers, and how that all gets put together. Uh, I think he would tell you he's very excited about what he has, you know, in terms of the talent level, you know, on the perimeter, up front, the running backs, the quarterback options, the tight ends. So that's the journey that we're on. You know, what is it that fits that? And then it's my job as the head coach to make sure it fits complementary football across the board and that the offense is complementing the defense. Um, and so in terms of the second part of your question, you know, what he brings, um, you know, for me, turning it over, you know, I really wanted to have somebody that, you know, had head coaching experience. Now, you know, never thought that, you know, you'd have somebody that was a head coach the way he has been in college and in the NFL and that background. Uh, and so it, it, it allows me a little, you know, more um, of a peace of mind and certainly a lot of trust there. I mean, I, I trust Chip in my life. And that's a big part of anytime you're, you know, you're handing something over like that, that you've done, you know, your, almost your entire career. Coach Ryan Day, thank you so much for your time. All right, thanks, guys.